All right, and so today we're going to go through a webinar. We're going to teach how to use a PT chart. Now, first and foremost, if you don't have sound via your computer, um, if you did get the, the uh, calendar invite, we do have a dial in there. Um, please mute your microphones if you are watching this on Zoom. If you have any questions, type them in the Q&A window or the chat on Facebook and we will try to get them get to them. Again, this is our first time, so we're trying this out and we'll see how this goes. Okay, and this webinar is gonna be recorded, so if you wanna watch this later on, we will have this. All right, first and foremost, my name is Henry Papa. I am the Sporland Sales Engineer out of Florida. And if you have any follow-up questions, recommendations, feedback, my email address is henry.papa at parker.com. Okay, so how to use a PT chart. Um, in this training module, we're gonna demonstrate the proper use of a PT wall chart, pocket chart, or our Chillmaster PT app. It's gonna illustrate how pressure and temperature measurements from a refrigeration unit may be useful for system analysis. And also it will include a discussion about superheated vapor, subcooled liquid, and a saturated mixture where we have both vapor and liquids present. Okay, so what you are going to learn is where superheated vapor exists, how to properly measure superheat, where subcooled liquid exists, how to measure subcooling, and then how to identify where a saturated mixture of liquid and vapor may be found. All right, the first thing we're going to discuss is how a refrigerant exists in a system. Then we'll go into the basic principles of the pressure temperature charts, PT charts for short, the saturated mixtures, then measuring superheat and subcooled. All right, in this picture here, we have our basic refrigeration system. We have our forming components, the compressor, our condenser, our metering device. In this example, it's a TEV, a mechanical expansion valve. Then we have our evaporator. Okay, and again, we're going to be talking about the different phases of refrigerant. And what does that mean? So let's go back to our high school chemistry days. We have four, really three main phases. We have solid, liquid, and gas or vapor. You may be, know it. Okay, but in a refrigeration system, we're primarily going to deal with liquid and vapor. And then we also have in our coils a mixture of the two, uh, what is also known as a saturated mixture, where we have both liquid and vapor present. Okay, so in this picture, you see three different colored lines here. The yellow is going to indicate a vapor. So we see that leaving our compressor. From our compressor, our hot discharge gas goes into our condenser where heat is going to be rejected. When heat becomes rejected, then that vapor is going to start to condense. And you see this indicated by blue, meaning we have both liquid and vapor still present. Now by the time the refrigerant gets to the end of our coils, we have a subcooled liquid. And anytime you have something that is subcooled, it means it is completely liquid. Okay, so then from our condenser, that liquid is gonna to flow to our metering device where some of the refrigerant flashes off. And then again, we have a saturated mixture. We have both liquid and vapor present. Now in our evaporator, heat is going to be absorbed into the refrigerant. When heat is absorbed, all the liquid refrigerant is going to boil until it all becomes a vapor. Now, once it all becomes a vapor, it leaves the evaporator going back to your compressor but it also has a higher temperature in the suction line than in the evaporator, meaning that it is completely vapor. And the reason we have to have vapor, the reason we have to have a superheated vapor leaving our evaporator is to protect our compressor. We don't want any liquid returning to our compressor to wash out any lubricant and damaging our compressor. Okay, now here's another picture here, just showing you the three phases of refrigerant that we see inside of our system. On the far left end, we have our superheated vapor. Okay, as the superheated vapor starts to cool, that happens in our condenser, then it becomes a saturated mixture where there's some liquid present and some vapor present. Then as it cools even further, we get a subcooled liquid or liquid. Okay, and that is present after our condenser and getting to our metering device. 
Now, while we're on this picture, I just want to talk about dew point and bubble point really quick. Now, if, with a lot of the new refrigerants that we have today, they are mixtures. And a mixture is simply that. It's a mixture of different refrigerants in specific proportions. And what happens with mixtures like that is that they condense and boil at different temperatures. Okay? So they start to boil at the bubble point and finish boiling at the dew point. And so the easiest way to use the PT charts for a blend refrigerant that has glide is anytime you're measuring superheat, you want to use the dew point. So dew, su, per heat. Or if you're measuring subcool, sub, bub, bull point. Okay, let me check to see if we have any questions so far. It looks like we may have, don't see any on Zoom. Let me check Facebook. Okay, continue. Okay, so if you haven't seen these before, this is what our pressure temperature charts look like. And really what a pressure temperature chart is telling you is the boiling point of a refrigerant at a specific pressure. Okay, so in the left side of this picture here, we have pressure highlighted of 130 pounds and 45 would be the boiling temperature. So meaning for 410A is what we're looking at. If your evaporator is running at 130 pounds, your refrigerant is boiling at 45 degrees. Okay, and you'll also notice that this PT chart has both a bubble point and dew point. Because 410A um, is pretty pure, it doesn't have different bubble and dew points, but a Refrigerant like 448, if you look two columns over, um, let's just look below it. If you were at 140 pounds, you would have a bubble point of 65 and a dew point at 74. So again, if you're measuring superheat, if you're looking at your evaporator, you want to use 74 degrees. And if you're calculating your subcooling, you would use 65 degrees. Okay, but that's what these PT charts are just telling you, what the boiling point and condensing points are for refrigerants at specific pressures. Okay, and for those of you savvy users out there, we do have an app, it's called Chillmaster PT. You can go on the App Store, you can go on the Android Store and look up Sporlin, you can look up Parker, and you should see this Chillmaster PT. And it's going to be loaded with virtually every single refrigerant that you're commonly using. And you can look up the pressure temperature relationships. Okay, so you can use either the scroller or you can plug in what pressure you're reading or what temperature you're reading, whether it's with your gauge, your temperature probes, or your smart service toolkit. Okay, now superheated vapor. Again, we talked about this. The importance of superheat and superheated vapor inside of a refrigeration system is for two purposes. We want to protect our compressors, and then we also want to make sure we're using our evaporator coils as efficiently as possible. So if we were sending liquid back from our evaporator to our compressor, we may wash out the lubricant, we lose efficiency, and we end up burning out our compressor. And that's why we have to make sure we have superheat. If we have superheat, we know we're only sending vapor back to our compressor. Okay, so what do we need to measure superheat? We're gonna need a couple things. We'll need our gauges to determine what our pressure is in our evaporator. Then we'll also need a temperature per. Each refrigerant. Okay, so measuring superheat. Uh, in this example, this is 410A. Can everyone see me? Okay, so in measuring superheat, what we need to do is subtract the saturated temperature from the actual line temperature. Okay. So the first thing we do is measure our actual suction line temperature using our temperature probe temperature clamp. 
We see in this example, it is 54 degrees. Next, we're gonna use our gauges to determine what our evaporator pressure is. Okay, from our gauges in this example, we see that it's 130 PSI. Okay, so using our PT chart, we know that at 130 PSI, our 410A refrigerant should be boiling at 45 degrees. Now to measure superheat, all we have to do is subtract the actual bulb temperature, subtract the uh, boiling temperature of 410A at 130 pounds, which was 45, and we end up with nine degrees of superheat. And again, that's, that's telling us that we're only sending vapor back to our compressor. Okay, so subcooled liquid. Again, after our compressor sends hot discharge gas to our condenser, we're rejecting heat, allowing the refrigerant to condense goes to our receiver and is pumped back to our metering device. Okay, and so just like measuring superheat, we wanna need, we're going to need the same tools as we did. Okay, we're going to need a temperature probe, we'll need our gauges, and then we'll also need a PT chart or the Chillmaster PT app. Okay, so what we wanna do first is measure the actual liquid line temperature we'll see that it is 106 degrees here. We use our gauges. We see that's 365 pounds. And now using our PT chart, we wanna know what your refrigerant is condensing at inside of our condenser. Okay, so at 366 degrees, we see that it should be condensing at 110 degrees Fahrenheit. So then we subtract 110 minus 105, and we end up with five degrees of subcooling, okay? And so we measure subcooling to make sure our system is properly charged. And we also know that we're only sending liquid to our metering device, because if we had a saturated mixture getting to our metering device, we would have no control and no cooling. Okay, so just some rules to determine refrigerant condition. If we have both liquid and vapor, then the refrigerant is saturated. And that's when we could use our PT charts to determine what the boiling and condensing points are. If the measured temperature is greater than saturation temperature, that means we have superheated vapor or only vapor. And if the measured temperature is less than the saturation temperature, that means the liquid is subcooled, or again, we only have liquid, okay? And that wraps it up for our first webinar on Facebook Live. Uh, I'm gonna see if I could get to any questions now. Okay, on Facebook, Jen is asking where she can get one of these nice PT charts. Uh, so Jen, reach out to your local Sporland wholesaler. Uh, if you go to sporland.com, you should be able to find any local wholesalers near you, and they should be able to get you some of these PT charts. Yeah. Okay, for those of you just joining, we just wrapped up on how to use a PT chart. Uh, this is something I think we should be doing uh, in the future. So if you have any ideas of what you would like us to cover, please feel free to uh, just drop us a line here on Facebook and let us know what we can cover for you. All right, well, I think that's where we're gonna wrap it up for today. Again, please check out sporland.com, Chillmaster PT. Um, it's our PT chart app. Uh, it's on iTunes, it's on the Android store. And again, if you need a PT chart, reach out to your local Sporland wholesaler.